get started, uh, does everybody have any handouts? Uh, I just want to welcome everybody. This is uh, the Economic Development uh, Committee for Eastlake, and uh, tonight we're just having a real estate symposium. Pretty much just an outreach to the public, um, to builders, to rehabbers, um, who uh, just uh, to reach out and find out what we can do to generate interest in our city uh, for, for development and, uh, and uh, improving our city. Uh, there's a there's a couple major changes that have happened in our city over the last year. Uh, the first was uh, the, the rezoning issue, which is issue eight, which allows the city to change the zoning of property a lot quicker than we used to. Uh, before we had to go to the public, and now we can go through the zoning board and then go to council and we can get zoning changed pretty quickly. So it's a lot more advantageous to uh, to avoid we'll a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, instead of like a year, it might be three months. So, um, and the other major change has been the passing of the Will B6 school issue, which is going to build two new uh, schools in our city, which is the, which is North High School and Longfellow, which is probably going to generate a lot of interest on those are built to younger families who move into our community. Um, <clears throat> in addition to that, there has been a lot more interest with um, businesses relocating or opening in our city. Um, and I'm sure over the next six months, um, that is going to be public information and that's, that's going to generate more interest in new construction, rehabbing, teardowns, rebuilds of, of residential property in, in Eastlake. Um, so I wanted to, I want to introduce uh, some of the uh, people that are here that um, may speak for a few minutes on um, how, we could, how we could help builders and rehabbers and assist them and, and um, you, know, you, you could come to us and we'll, we'll help you uh, any way you can to help our community. Um, first we have John Rogers. Is he here from the land bank? No. Well, we should be here shortly. Then we have Mark, Mark Rentana. Uh, he is the, uh, he is the uh, Lake County Port and Economic Development Authority uh, Executive Director. And uh, we have uh, Dennis Morley, uh, who's our mayor. We have uh, the building director, David Men, who will be the first person to contact for uh, any construction or for rehab. Um, we have our legal advisor, Randy Clamer. Um, then we have the Economic Community Development um, Committee, which uh, is Jackie Bert Ramnick, Mark Kane, um, we have uh, Stan Lepp, and uh, Kathy Berry. Uh, then we have um, some members of council. Are, uh, Jason Kucinic, uh, John Myers, and uh, Dave Spotton. And I'm going to turn this over to uh, Mayor Morley. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then um, our commissioner is Judy Moran and uh, Kevin Malachek. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to uh, our mayor and let's speak for a few minutes. Well, Mike explained a lot of what I was going to explain about the whole charter change, which the charter change was really big for us last year. Uh, I went to council last year and said, you know, the rezoning is uh, is always been an issue in the city. Anytime else, especially as the vineyards and some of the other areas that we have, people will come, investors will come and look at the land and say, this got to go through um, the voting of our of the people. six to a year uh, time frame. So I uh, asked council to go to the ballot, and as, as Mike explained, said that uh, right now we go through the planning commission, go through the planning commission, and go through city council. Through city council, it cannot be an emergency measure. So if there was any issues with any of our residents or uh, in the area, they could come and speak their mind and say they don't think this is the proper use for the area. So that's a big thing that's changed. Uh, we've had some People come to us, talk about some areas that want to be developed. Uh, talking with the law director, we believe it would take a couple of months to go through planning and through city council. It depends if there was any issues, but it's a lot different than going six to uh, a year. So we're hoping that will help us for some development. The other part of this meeting was if, if there's any feedback you have for the city 
anything that you hear about the city that you sometimes think is a roadblock for any building, for any rehab, you know, that's the things that I need to hear. Our building officials need to know, our council people need to know. So that's the part of that reason for this meeting is give us some feedback of if you see there's roadblocks in our city that we still need to look at for building and development. We are hoping the schools are going to be a big impact. Uh, they're both be on Stevens Boulevard to bring in uh, different families, you know, in different groups of people when other people are either moving out or uh, going somewhere else. So, you know, that's our goal in all of this. Uh, the vineyards is one of our areas that we need to develop, which is where the old Walmart is. There's some deed restrictions on there that we've had, uh, with especially with selling the food. I just found, I put out to our residents uh, a couple months ago. One of the reasons we can't get a, a, a grocery store in there is uh, John Eagle has the lease almost until 2019. So there's a deed restriction, you can't sell food, so obviously we're not going to get a grocery store in there at least until 2019 unless someone wants to buy out Giant Eagle, and from what I hear, it's a big number, so don't really look at that. The Walmart building, we've had some bites here and there, goes back and forth, sometimes Walmart isn't. A um, few of the people that's gone in there, they just don't want to sell because they're a competitor. So we're hoping, that's one of my goals, is the vineyards to get developed in some of our other areas for some residential. Thanks for all coming tonight, and I think Commissioner Moran is up next. I just wanted to point out that the handout I was in here, um, in the handout there is a zoning map, uh, which is useful if you're looking at property or development or new construction, or tear down and rebuild. Um, and then the, the third item is uh, vacant land. Uh, there are 22 lots in the city that are for sale currently. Um, the next one are our share of sales that are coming up. There are 12 share of sales of properties. I don't know the condition of the property, but uh, they're coming up for sale in the next 30 days. So uh, the address is right there. Um, I also have a list of the foreclosures. I'm not sure when they're going to make share of sale or when they're going to be for sale, but there are a lot of houses that are in foreclosure in our city, um, all throughout the city. Uh, and then there is also a um, registration of vacant dwellings. Um, these houses have not made it to the sheriff's sale yet, but there are um, 94 houses that are currently vacant, have been vacant for some time. So there's a lot of opportunity here for a, a builder or a rehabber, um, and hopefully this could get some direction. Um, next, we're going to have uh, uh, Commissioner Jean Ryan, who's going to talk for a few minutes. And this is an open discussion. If anybody has questions, just go ahead and ask. Um, I'm just going to take a few minutes of your time because I do want to leave it open to the other commissioner and a couple other people here that are here to speak tonight. But I think one of the things that we need to concentrate on and that we have taken um, the first steps with is revamping our building department. Uh, we hired a wonderful man, Dave Strichko, as our director, and I have sat down with him to streamline process to get plans approved, to get, you know, plans you can e-file them now, um, electronically, obviously, and we've changed the hour, we've made longer hours to make it more convenient to people that need to get permits and need to get inspections and need to get things like that. We have weekend hours now when we never did before. We're open during lunch when we never were before. And I think all those things help create the environment to make it easier for residents, for builders, for contractors, for realtors to get their jobs done. And um, I want to say that that was one of the big things, because I was a small business owner in Willowick, and I, I'll be very honest, I had a hell of a time when I had my building and we were going to do an addition, couldn't get people to come out, couldn't get the city to come out when I needed it to, um, going out to the county at that time was just a nightmare. Um, you know, I, I had all my plumbing and everything put in, in the concrete and the bricks all done, and other inspector came out and had to tear it all up. I mean, that, for a small business owner, that's a lot of money. And that's a lot of wasted time. And you're not making any money while you're sitting there looking at this big hole in the ground. So it was my intention when Dave came on board that we get this rolling and that we make it more customer friendly, more service oriented to just get the job done. And another thing is sometimes when you move into a new community, and this is for residential, but when you move into a new community, they welcome you to Willoughby, Willoughby, East Lake with um, 
you know, a little welcome envelope, a little welcome basket, something like that. Well, we've had discussion with our GIS department to make it a virtual welcome to each resident in the city and businesses that if you drop a pin on your address, it will tell you who your cable provider is. It will tell you um, what phone services are available to you. It will tell you the demand, you know, everything you need to know about the property that you are currently sitting on. It will tell you where the laundry, where the laundromat is, it will tell you where the grocery store and the post office is. All the things that a new person coming into your community wants to know. And obviously there's a million people that can tell them, but when you have it, when you're sitting there at night and you're trying to figure out, you know, how do I fit into this new community? That is one of the things that we want to do. And to make it easier for people to do business within Lake County. I mean, we need to create the environment that makes it possible for business to expand and to grow. So we give them the tools. We have, and Mr. Rantola will um, expound on all of this, but we have a small, we have a small business loan program. We have just the, the things that, you know, workforce development is in there because people that are relocating their businesses here to the county, they need workers. And right now we are at a very critical shortage of workers here in the county. There's jobs, there's just no one put in them. So we've partnered with schools, we've partnered with, you know, like Auburn Career Center to do certificate programs to get people to fill those jobs. And I think that, from my perspective, is a very important part of making it a more welcoming and more um, stable community for people to enhance their quality of life. So, and on my little part, does anybody have any questions at this point? Then I'll turn it over to Christian Malachek, and he can elaborate further. Thank you, Mr. Brad. I guess I'm whom the bell pulls uh, at this <laughs> point. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty high. Awesome. The mayor likes to pick up. Uh, Kevin Malachek, I'm one of your county commissioners. Uh, very happy to be here. Thank, thank you, Mike, for organizing this forum tonight. Um, yeah, I was going to say many of the things that Commissioner Moran said, so I'm not going to go into many of those right now, except we did actually have a meeting even this morning with the Northern Department talking about many of those different initiatives we're trying to push forward to make sure people know that Lake County is open for business. Uh, so we're kind of sticking that flag out that we see out in front of different restaurants and things like that. We are open and uh, we want to make sure that whatever people need from the county, expedited forms, making sure they have every piece of information they need to get their businesses started is going to be right in front of them uh, and have their fingertips. So that's one thing that we're trying to do. But the Port and Economic Development Authority, I just want to say a few words about that and I don't want to steal of Mark Rantel is funded here as executive director. Uh, they've really been at the forefront of many different programs we've been offering as well. We've been offering uh, small business loans uh, that are out there. Uh, we've also been working with several cities within the county that are offering their own incentive grant programs that are out there. So if new manufacturers looking to locate in there, if there's looking to do job expansion, whatever there is, we are a resource that can be used by any business that's looking out there or any city that's looking to, to partner with our port authority uh, and putting together different business opportunities and expansion opportunities. So we're happy to be here, we're happy to listen, and uh, happy to take any questions that you all have as we go on the field the forum today. Thank you. Am I supposed to? Well, I'll uh, uh, Mark, uh, Mark's going to uh, be, uh, Mark McConnell, uh, the executive director of the Port Authority, is going to come up next. But the one thing that has been mentioned is tax abatement. I did receive um, quite a few emails regarding tax abatement. Um, I'm sure that uh, the council is willing to listen to any ideas about that subject. Um, it would be a one-on-one -on -one basis. You know, come to us with questions, and we'll see what we can work with you on. Um, I also have our finance directors checking with the county to see what we can and can't do on them. Because, again, the schools will be involved. And, and the county office will be involved. So it's just, as we said, you know, our, out of our county taxes, the city of Houston is about 9%, almost 8 something. So I'll just give you an example. My taxes on my house are $3,300. The city of East Lake is $259. So out of that portion, if anything, we can abate. But is that something that's going to bring people <coughs> that we abate $259 for 10 years, 5 years, whatever it is? But we're willing to look at it and we're willing to look into the future to see if that's something feasible. I've talked to Mary Anderson a little and we'll be able to talk to the commissioner about the tip and all that and so on. If I may, I think out of this you might want to propose some projects, draw up some concepts and mail it out to investors and realtors to pass that information on. Yeah, we've
talked, Brady's talked to us, sat down with some land we have off of Woodland. Right. Again. I'm and sure you're not on the list. Mm -hmm. Save time if you have specific projects and it allows whatever on that project. And you can help me. I can analyze it and say, I'd be interested or, or I wouldn't. And okay. I'll pass it on. You know, and I think that's part of, I think that's what you want to count. Okay, it is. So I appreciate those comments. Well done, Mark. Uh, so we have a brief, a uh, little bit on the Port Authority. Uh, Eastlake has its own Port Authority, but it has a particularly different function. They're not involved in public finance in terms of projects. Uh, they operate your boat launch and other, other activities. But we have a cooperative agreement with the city of Eastlake. So if there's an economic development function, that needs to be done in Eastlake, the county court authority can act on your behalf to make something happen. Um, and port authorities, a uh, very confusing uh, item that the state legislators, <coughs> excuse me, state legislator created. But state law allows us to enhance, foster, aid, provide, and promote transportation, economic development, housing, recreation, governmental operations, culture, or research. So there's a this whole big list of things that we can help with. And the county asked us to serve as the county's economic development department and provide support to all of the 23 communities in the county. So we do different things for different people on all kinds of projects. And we're always here. We've been with the mayor and your uh, economic development advisors and We've been through Walmart with people and tried to help them understand what's possible. And other discussions we've had with the folks who own the vineyards and so forth. Looking at, um, Commissioner Moran mentioned the importance of workforce, and I brought along a few of these that I'll leave to <coughs> anyone who's interested. The county uh, unemployment rate is about 4.5%, and what we really say is, it's not finding a job for everybody, it's finding someone for every job. There's a shortage of people to fill the jobs that exist in the county today. And we have to work with the schools and so forth to see that we're developing the workforce. We estimate that in the next decade, we're going to be four to 8,000 workers short in the county just to meet the needs of the people who are here doing business. So it's important that we attract people, and I think it's wonderful your efforts focused on the housing component. A couple items that might help you in your decision-making process if you're flipping houses or developing new subdivisions is. Last year in the United States, the number one group of first-time home buyers was 31 years old, the front edge of the millennials. Two things are happening there. <coughs> one, they've finally taken down some of their student, don't, um, student loans and are getting financially solvent and are able to buy a house. And second, the biological clocks are ticking and family formation is starting to happen with the millennial generation, which was postponed. So in terms of what you're trying to do, um, I think that you need to develop or redevelop houses in terms of what the millennials are looking for. The demographics say they're not going to live downtown in apartments forever. When they form their family, families, they're going to come to Eastlake for the same reasons your parents or you came to Eastlake originally. You came here because the city had sidewalks, you could walk to the park, you could walk to the school, you could walk to church, and there were shopping close by. All those same things are going to be attractive to the group of people who are going to, the millennials as they buy housing. They don't want to buy, not to disparage Ryan or Bolte or any of the big home builders, they don't want to live in Perry or Madison, they want to live closer to downtown or downtown Willoughby or any of these other places. So the bones of the houses that you have in this community that were primarily built in the 50s and 60s are fabulous. Those houses were extremely well built and they can be extremely well rebuilt in order to make them attractive 
for millennials. So as you're considering your conversation, look at, if you're going to flip a house, how do we take that small kitchen and make it a big kitchen? Do we add a room on the back that makes a great room that goes onto the kitchen? Make the house energy efficient, that's the number one request of millennials in terms of what they want in a house. Put in the technology that goes with it. Uh, new windows, new insulation, uh, turn a bathroom, take one bedroom and convert it into a walk-in closet and a master suite off the other master bedroom. You may not need as many three bedrooms anymore, you might be able to do it with two as you convert some of the bungalows that exist. There's a lot of things that can make these homes attractive to the millennials. Then the school systems giving you two of the best selling tools you could possibly have, a new elementary and a new high school that people can walk to again. So if you kind of follow the timelines, you got millennials creating families. That means about five, six years you're going to have kids starting the school. The new schools will be built. If you've taken the houses that you have today and converted them to what I call a millennial house and address the items. Don't, don't just put granite counters and stainless steel appliances and fit it into the, the footprint of what was there because that doesn't meet the need. It's cosmetically nice and so forth, but it's important that you start seeding the community with houses that meet this future need so people will come here. Work with the schools to make East Lake attractive to the millennials as they come for housing. So I don't. I know you've got lots of other items on the agenda. The one other, the county loan program that the commissioners mentioned, um, works as a gap financing, where there's a, a lender, a bank, or 504 like Marty's program, and uh, we can help fill the gap. Uh, over since 2011, the counties lent about a million dollars, leveraged about nine million in private investment, and created about 100 jobs with the county loan program. It's only up to 125,000, but on a million dollar project, it's got 50% financing from the bank and 40% from the SBA. You can help make the difference. So we're always available to do that. Marty at the SBA pro with the 504 loan program can do that and maybe Marty wants to tell you something about that before you get into the, your house and any questions for us. So I'll leave these behind if you're just interested in what the Port Authority's done and this is the program we're working on all the schools to work on future workforce. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think, uh, Mark Bertano, I can kind of hit it on the head that there's a lot of opportunity in like there's a lot of vacant houses, there's a lot of houses going to share sale, there's there's little activity, and there's a lot, there's a storm coming of we've got rezoning, we've got a lot of new business coming in, we've got schools coming in, it's going to be a desirable area, it's lower priced than our, our, our neighbors uh, will be in, in Little um, so it's really a great opportunity to invest in the city and the we have in, in, in development. So um, uh, I'm going to introduce uh, our building director, uh, David Mann. He's got a few things to talk about. I'm not a politician, so it's a little <laughs> rough around here talking. But I wanted to say one thing. I want to bring it back to the city of Eastlake. Um, the city of Eastlake does have their own building department. So I don't want to confuse the county, which is doing a great job, but if you need something in the city of East Lake, you come directly to us. You don't have to go to the county. So I want to make sure that's clear that we have our own system here. You come here, we do everything here. Um, I also <coughs> want to be clear on, because I know I have some people here about the Planning Commission uh, approval that the mayor touched on. Um, Again, if someone has an idea where they want to uh, bring in, say, a company and the zoning was a little bit different uh, than what was allowed, that use was not allowed, you come, we would prefer that you come in, sit down with me and the mayor, we'll talk about it, and 
and try to give you the right directions to go first. Because the last thing we want to do is waste your time and give you the runaround. We want to make sure that we make this as smoothly as possible for you. Uh, and like the mayor says, try to cut down on the time frame, get you in. If it's a good project and we can do it, let's get it done. Uh, but it does have to go to the Planning Commission first. The Planning Commission hears it. Uh, then they will vote. If it is, even if it's approved or disapproved, it can go to council. If it's approved, it definitely goes to council. And then they, again, it's not an emergency. They have to do their readings and then go from there. So, uh, do I have any questions on that before we any further? Okay. On the residential end, uh, I get a lot of calls almost every day. Can a lot be built on? Um, I like to think anything can be built on. It's just how do we get you there? Um, our zoning code has changed through the years, obviously. Uh, Section 11, Chapter 11 in our zoning code will tell you about residential building and commercial building. There's charts in there that will tell you uh, most of our lots are in our R60 group. Um, and there will be a chart that tells you what size of uh, land you need, how many square foot, your setbacks, side yards, front yards, all that stuff. So that will give you some idea right away whether the parcel you buy can be buildable. There is uh, some other things that can come into play. And uh, if the parcel has been deeded before 1951, there is a little leeway there that we may be able to not necessarily stick with the chart that we have today, but we may be able to tinker with it a little bit and fit a structure in there. Um, so chapter 11 is the best thing, and I always use the county website. I go on their GIS system every day. I pull up the overview of the lots. Uh, it'll give you all the information you need. Um, it'll give you the parcel numbers, uh, the, the lot size, everything. And that's a good thing to start with. Uh, the other thing that's been coming up a lot, we do have a lot, you know, lots available in our city. Uh, sometimes there's two lots next door, and what I'm hearing is they're selling, they're trying to advertise them as one lot. And then I go on the GIS system, check the records, and it's two separate lots. Uh, so you have to be careful when you're buying vacant land that, you know, is it one lot, two lot, three lots? And there are, there are ways to combine the lots, too. It's uh, through the county. You can get, uh, you know, lots joined together and everything. It's a simple process. Uh, by combining two lots, it's more buildable. Um, me and the mayor meet the people every day. I mean, I get people every day coming to us about building and, and developing, and uh, now we just need them to get through the door and get the plans in. So whatever we can do to make your life easier, I'm not going to guarantee that everyone that comes through that door, we're going to be able to do it, but we will do our best to get the project done. Okay. Thank you, Director Matt. <coughs> um, David Matt is really just a wealth of information. He gave me a lot of information for the meeting, and uh, he's extremely helpful. So if anybody's looking to um, possibly build or rehab in our city, he's definitely the first step and uh, uh, very helpful. Uh, we have uh, one more speaker, and that is uh, the uh, director of SBA uh, Lending, uh, Marty Garou. Yes, thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Marty Garou, and I run the Small Business Capital Corporation. Um, about 30 years ago, the SBA created an economic development loan program to help small businesses. And uh, there's 250 offices around the country, and I run the office here in Lake County. Uh, over the years, we've helped 
more than 250 small businesses get financing uh, so they can either grow their business, expand, build a new building, or buy equipment. Um, and so it's another economic development tool that's available to small businesses. And since this is an economic development forum, I think it would be um, a good program for you to be aware of because it's helped a lot of companies in Lake County and beyond. Um, Mark mentioned that there are occasions when some small businesses are trying to arrange their financing and they get stuck because there's a gap maybe in the appraised value versus the amount of financing. And the county commissioners came up with a loan program a few years ago that we've used successfully multiple times to close that gap. And if it wasn't for that loan program, those projects wouldn't have gotten done. Um, and so I just wanted to mention that if you get a roadblock in a project, you've got to find another source of capital, and the county has a great small business loan program that's available. So if you've got a small business or you know of small business people that are looking to buy a building or a piece of equipment, um, they ought to explore the SBA loan program through our office. I've got some literature here and some business cards. If anybody's interested, please just uh, see me after the meeting and I'll give you more information. Thank you. Thank you. And, yes. Anybody that has information that they would like to give us, please do, and I would put it in our building department. So when people come in, I have some stuff to give them to them and direct them. So that'd be very helpful. Uh, I'd just like to thank everybody for coming out. Oh, uh, yes. Sir. Um, my name is Chad Engel, and I'm a, a Chad at home. I'm a local builder and developer. And uh, first of all, I want to say to Commissioners, what a phenomenal choice and what a phenomenal job you've done for the Lake County Building Department. It's been amazing. The, the change is really refreshing. And every community is different that, that we build in. So you kind of have to tailor the way you do things. You definitely have to tailor, tailor the way you do things to fit the community you're in. And, and I haven't had uh, the occasion to, to work with Dave's department yet, but I will say it's very refreshing that you're having this meeting to find out what's been going on because East Lake traditionally was a very difficult building department to work with. And I know you want to bring people in here. And 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 I built the houses across the street about the time when they moved to City Hall over there. And I built a few houses in Yachty Cove and I gave up after that. It was just so difficult. I'm about to start trying it again. Okay. And and I and I went to the building department They went out the next day, they, they looked at the property, gave me some ideas on what we could and couldn't do, and it's just a refreshing change here as well. So I'm looking forward to testing the waters again and, and seeing how it will go. You probably have a few of Barron's pending, don't you? With all this nice talk. No, I don't. <laughs> And your numbers just keep getting bigger and bigger, and 
you're not going to be happy. So, so we've cut, we've cut through a lot of that. You know, I'll go directly to the engineer. Dave talks to me and says, hey, there's an issue here. Uh, so that's what we've been doing. So I'm glad to hear that our environment in the city has gone better with our building department. Because obviously we want buildings here. We want new houses built. We want everyone to have a good um, project with us. You know, sometimes there are bumps in the road, but we've been getting through them. So I appreciate the comments about the city with that aspect. I'd like to bring up one more thing as it relates to rehabbing guys that are doing flipping and things like that. Um, as, just as an idea, generally when we approach a house, buy a house, we're essentially treated just like a home buyer, someone that's going to be moving in there and living there. And some of the protections that the city has, rightfully so, for example, escrow, uh, the house has a few violations or sometimes they're excessive and you have to put in like one and a half times the anticipated build amount in the escrow to make sure it gets done. But from a business standpoint, from a rehabber standpoint, that's what they're buying it for is to do it. So maybe there's a, a thought process for a streamlined program because three years ago I might have had fifty or sixty thousand dollars tied up in escrow for a violated properties throughout the number of properties that I had and that amounts to an entire another property I could purchase, but that money just sits there in limbo while I'm getting the work done and getting it back out of escrow in order to keep going. So if somebody's coming in with a standpoint as an established business for doing rehabs, maybe there's a way to look at that a little bit differently, not so they're not tying up so much capital in escrow. Yeah, we've discussed a little, I'll get phone calls sometimes, and then I'll either I'll go through the service department or Dave on, I think we, I think we lowered a escrow a few months ago because of what the project was um, or what they had to fix. So we, we're looking at that on a different basis. And then also as Dave, and now that winter is going to be coming, this is where we're going to do a lot of our homework, looking through the other cities to see what if there's something different. Because we just changed a ton of things in the building department we went to council with. And, and it's all to the better, so we're, we're going to continue to work every day to try to get better. For well, about 15 building. years ago, Euclid had a uh, mm. basically a rehab permit, which was it was really nice. It kind of you went in for the permit and checked off everything that you're going to do, and it was one entire permit for the rehab. Um, and then uh, about five years into doing it, they eliminated that and broke it down to individual permits and. The permit costs went through the roof, and the rehabbers scattered. They were gone. They lost them like that because it just got so cost prohibitive and and uh, just too much work, too much time. The other just wasn't worth it because after all, it's a business, you know. And they just didn't want to deal with all the bureaucracy and one permit after another, after another, after another. The the general permit that was actually that was actually a pretty nice option to have. It really streamlined and and made our job easier because we weren't constantly in the building department pulling permits for every, you know, uh, it was it was nice. So it was a program, it was, it might have even been longer, it might have been 15, 15 years ago, it's hard to remember, but if you look back, you know, you might be able to find some information on it. Especially if you've got a large uh, inventory of properties that you guys want to get rolling, get flipped, and get back to occupied, that might be a comfortable thing. Well, what we've done, point. we had do allow that to happen. What's so that? You can put a, a cut down on permits and all that, and put them more on the one as you come in the first time, so mm -hmm. you don't have to come back. We already back. do that. Okay. Uh, just to let you know, on the point of sales in the city of East Lake, the point of sales are done through our service department mm -hmm. as of now. Uh, they do sewer. Die test, sanitary and storm, and public sidewalks if you have them. That's it. That's all that's on the point of sale. So hopefully, if you had experiences before, that escrow amount in East Lake shouldn't be that high. For well, that was when the property had standing violations. Like it had been violated. The garage was violated or the driveway was violated. This was a house that's been sitting there that had past violations assessed to her address to the house. Those that became a part of it. So, the point of sale is 
dye test, mm -hmm. and public sidewalks. That's it. So, uh, and the service department does it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so again, your escrow shouldn't be that high because it's only dye test, storm, mm -hmm. sanitary storm, and public sidewalks. Yeah, I think you're, you might be, I know in Euclid, I know some of the Cuyahoga mm -hmm. uh, County cities have severe point of sale uh, inspections. And I think you may have had that in the past here. Yeah, I'm trying to delicately say that. Yes, it's not. <laughs> Sanitary and storm, yeah. that's the point of sale. I would say too, you know, the mayor, I learned from the mayor because every time there was something going on, he'd come to me and I'd say, we can't do that because it's just my inclination, mm -hmm. the ultimate servant of the city. <laughs> and his standard phrase would be, see, I would want to do business in the city. I'd like, oh, God, and I'd go back and I'd have to look at it again to find a way of making it work. But Dave had, does that a lot too. He'll call me and I'll say, like, I don't want to charge this guy an extra permit for this extra, you know, it's just an extra fee. I don't really need. So we always have that conversation where we have to look at the ordinances to find a solution and see what makes sense. And my recommendation to you guys is ultimately my question to him is, is the city gonna be safe, mm -hmm. right? What do we know about this guy? What other bonds does he have? You know, ultimately my goal is making sure the city doesn't get stuck with a homeowner who's calling and saying, this guy didn't finish my kitchen, I got a floor that's wide open, now we can't find him because he's, he's out of Pittsburgh. So, you know, as long as there's that security too that the builder or the home remodeler can bring to day, that's one of the questions that I'm always asking is, is the city going to be safe if we use some flexibility in the ordinances because it's a new situation? But. And I only have one more suggestion and I'll leave it alone. As a resident of the city and someone who owns a few properties in the city, uh, we, if, especially if you're renting properties, I want to be in a position where I have to get an occupancy permit from you to where you come in and inspect my property before anyone moves in it uh, because there are some properties out here that people really should be living in. And renters are, you know, they're absentee landlords and there's a property right now they're moving out and unless somebody gets in, they're gonna be moving right back into what these people, people moved out of and I know that it's not nice in there. And it just, and, so. and that's been tossed around yeah, I, I, being, a, being a landlord, I would be, I, I'd be happy to, <clears throat> to apply for that permit and do it each time I, I bring in a new tenant, have you walk through my house and make sure that it's a nice house to move into because some of them in this city are just not nice and we need to eliminate that. Quick. Good suggestion. And, and the one thing with rehabbers, uh, what I've been doing with, uh, especially the rehabbers, I don't know because I've only been around here two years. I came from University Heights, mm -hmm. Cuyahoga County, where you have tons of rentals, uh, a lot of rehabbers. Uh, but I've been meeting with the rehabbers. We do a walkthrough on the house and, and get their ideas of what they may want to do. So they know when I come out that they're not going to be surprised. And I know when I come out, I'm not going to be surprised. Sure. So it's worked out really well that way. Uh, it's one more visit, but it's a visit that's well worth it. Mm -hmm. So, again, as the mayor pointed out, communications, we're trying to really develop that. And uh, now I don't always bat 100%. Yeah. There's always <laughs> someone I can't. You know, I'm you know. talking about the people that avoid you like a play. <laughs> yes. So, uh, we do our best. <clears throat> Thank everybody for coming out, and um, if you have any questions or any suggestions or, or ideas, uh, you know, please contact me or myself, uh, Dave Nunn, and uh, we have to help anyway.